use keywords from the interviews to link women together. In other words, W21 aims to use a neural networking system to build a matrix of a female network. So I'll introduce our uh, founders. Valeria, who is here today, is a curator and researcher with a focus on visual studies, biology, and AI, her work explores the relationship between bodies, technologies, and future ecosystems. She holds an MA in the history of art and an MA in curatorial museum studies from the Courtauld Institute of Art. She's also currently working as an assistant curator at the Fiorucci Art Trust in London. Indrani is a current doctoral candidate in history theory and criticism of art and architecture program at MIT. She studies modern art of the United States with a particular interest in histories of abstraction as they intersect with theories of the mind, histories of spirituality, and reception theory. Saha holds a BA in cognitive aesthetics from Duke, where she was a Mellon Mays undergraduate fellow. And quickly about myself, I am a doctoral candidate at MIT studying the historical, historical intersections of color, chemistry, and optics in early 19th century French art. My background is in neuroscience and our history. All right, Valeria, I'll give it to you. I think you're muted. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> I was trying to see that. Okay. So thanks everyone for being here today. We're very pleased to welcome artist Lito Katu and Kay Watson to discuss about post-human condition in the digital art practice. Kay is a researcher, producer, and curator working with art and advanced technologies, photography, and video games. She's currently interim head of arts technologies at Serpentine Galleries and a PhD researcher at Beebeck University of London. Recent projects include Artist Words, The Deep Listener of Catharsis by Jakob Steenson, Hito Stereal, Actual Reality, Jenna Sutella, I Magma, and Ian Chang, Bob. Lito is a visual artist born in Nicosia in Cyprus. She is a graduate of the Royal College of Art in London with an MA in Sculpture and the Athens Schools of Fine Arts. Lito is the recipient of the Ducato Prize 2019 and the New Position Award for the Art Column 2018, and she has been the invited as artist of the Foundation Tiley Residency 2021. Part of an emergent continuum of production, Lito's work negotiates understandings of materiality and subjectivity through a composition of practices spanning from digital fabrication to thermochemical elaborations. Her work engaged with the sculptural potentiality of flatness, processes of embodiment and the transfigurations of material properties within the margins of space and time. Her practice raises questions of the issues of alterities and symbiosis. Tonight, we will depart from Lito's work, The Red Lake, a real-time AI-generated work to explore the relationship between intersectional practice, environmental concern, gaming, and data collection. Developed over the course of the artist residencies at the Google Cultural Institute in Paris, the work focuses on Sun, a basic AI creature created to embody an ecological subjectivity alien to human thoughts. The structuring data is collected- in an hour, I am busy. The structury data is collected from Red Lake, a mine site located near Nicosia, Cyprus, one of the fastest climatic changing regions of the southeast Mediterranean zone. The lake is a remnant of an ancient copper mine active from the Calcolithic period until the late 60s. The high acidic environment of the lake does not allow any biological living organism to develop, leaving the surrounding areas impervious. Sun, an engendered AI hybridly conceived with human, divine, and animal traits lives in the Red Lake, recreated by Katu as a real-time digital environment. Their body and actions monthly respond to specific climatic variations such as temperature, humidity, visibility, wind speed, and weather. Sun's brain is built to guard and react to the Red Lake. They are imagined as a mythological fig figure protecting their unique surroundings. And now I would really like you to, um, to see a little bit of a clip from the work.
We don't have the sound though, but it doesn't matter. Valeria. Can you hear it actually? Not really. Let me try to see turn on speakers. Can you hear it now? No, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you can have the image. Lito, it's so beautiful with the sound. So we should try once more. Mm. It's really, really gorgeous hearing it earlier and we tested it. So <laughs> very strange. We'll try again. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. I can't hear you go away. Valeria, do you have headphones in and you didn't have them in earlier? It might be your headphones. Um. Yeah, maybe you should try disconnecting your headphones, Valeria. Maybe she can't hear us now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, Petros. Wait. Valeria, you, she probably can see the chat. We have a tip, Petros. <laughs> Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. yes. No. I think it might be the headphones, but she's not hearing us, let me tell her. <laughs> I've lost her. Yeah. Um, should wait, we start wait. or should we wait? Yeah, we can. I think we can go yeah. on and like have a glimpse of the work at the end or in between our chat. Since <clears throat> we we already yeah had bits of it without the sound, even without the sound. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder whether it's worth you know for you to to give us a bit more of a description of. You know a bit more insight into mm. this piece of work and then we can expand from there mm. yeah so actually I, I met with Valeria when I was producing this work uh, back in 2017 uh, at the Google uh, Cultural uh, Center headquarters in Paris um, I was invited there for the residency for the 89 plus residency and it coincided with a um, uh, visit that I did back to Cyprus. Um, and I, oh, by chance, I, I visited the, the spot of the mine and I was very, uh, very much impressed by, by the landscape. Um, you know, the image stayed with me. I was feeling that I wanted to do something with that with the area, like implement somehow uh, what I felt, what I, what I digested from, from, the, um, from the visit um, in my work. So when uh, the residence invitation came, I was thinking how I could uh, engage uh, with my recent um, visit and the recent experience of, uh, um, of the specific spot. Um, 
I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, Valeria, can you put can you put uh, your your mic? Can you be there? I, I, uh, oh, sorry. S sorry, no. Con continue, please. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Um. Um. Yeah. So. Um. um uh, I felt that I, I, I had to um, engage uh, with with a spot like with a um, with a place that I visited and, and embrace it more um, in in the practice. Uh, so when the invitation came, I was thinking vividly how I could incorporate um, this um, idea of working with uh, machine learning elements, which was something that. Uh, I was given the opportunity to explore uh, while working with uh, with engineers at uh, Google, and uh, yeah, I mean, the narrative came up as basically as a story of creating this character, this uh, basic uh, AI character, which would uh, somehow uh, become a mythological being linked to the to the environment. Um, and then uh, I was um, I was thinking very much this environmental aspect that uh, briefly Valeria gave in her introduction uh, of how much climatic change is affecting southeastern Mediterranean area. And uh, I decided uh, to create uh, this being under. Uh, this idea of uh, a body being affected by uh, those changes, uh, a body being in constant transformation from those climatic changes. Uh, so basically what is happening is that um, uh, what happened is that we uh, design uh, by using uh, mm, mm -hmm. To get to two different game engines, like both Unreal and Unity. Uh, in Unity, I worked with uh, a Google engineer, uh, Jonathan Tanand, which I am uh, uh, forever, uh, you know, I feel so much gratitude uh, for all his help and guidance in that um, we created the brain of the character with uh, uh, linked with all the uh, environmental data. Uh, which are directing afterwards um, its emotion and its behavior within the simulated environment. And all the rest of the visualization, visualization of, the, um, uh, of the landscape and uh, the building of the character itself was done in Unreal. Because I was going to say that there, there is like two elements to the work. There is the kind of in many ways you've built the world, <laughs> you've recreated this, this world. Um, but then there's also this embodiment of um, a number of different things uh, that, is the, that is Sam. So I was just wondering if you could sort of talk a little bit more about Sam and the way that that, um, that embodiment has been created. So in terms of like, um, there's obviously, a, a visual element there's, it's like both visual and then there's like a um sort of a, a real-time data capture kind of element to it as well so it'd just be good to like like pick apart you know what's what sam is sort of embodying in this yeah. in this world yeah so um it was a question of uh what kind of of a being would be present in an environment which uh, you can feel the lack um, uh, of human absence, uh, which is, I mean, it's a transition as, as the copper mine was, of course, uh, active before. Uh, so you can feel uh, an impervishment, you can feel an abandoned um, area, industrial area at the same time. So um, the first question that arose to me was, um, how do I talk about this absence of, of the human body, but without uh, being anthropocentric? And how do I engage with um, 
um, this mythological aspect that I felt uh, that would make more sense uh, when I was thinking of creating uh, a guardian, a character that would uh, function as, um, uh, yeah, let's say as um, a, a character closer to to a Sisyphean fate of you know repeating gestures and behaviors that uh, might be. Um, might not be meaningful at all, but somehow they they are very much related to the uh, to the spot, the location, to what um, the landscape is about. So um, mm -hmm. it, it is a composition of uh, human, I mean, visually, and how we worked with uh, uh, the model of of um, sun. Um, it is a composition basically of uh, human, animal, and um, technological parts. I mean, what the body is about. Um, then another element which might not be uh, so obvious um, is that um, there are various um, tattoos, let's say, on the on the body. Mm, uh, somehow traces or. Um, um, symbols, uh, language symbols, um, drawings, um, which is a part also connected with um, with the rest of my practice and my sculptural work. But um, those specific ones, they all derive from, um, um, let's say, the, the, the content of uh, what they are representing comes from um, an, an imagery which is closer to images that are related with Cypriot antiquity. So I was feeling that when, uh, whenever this creature lies down to uh, take a nap, which is something that happens a lot as uh, its energy is affected by the, um, by the various um, uh, ecological elements. And it, afterwards, when we'll get the chance to see a recording of it, um, um, it, it will be more obvious that uh, it can lose its energy. And when this happens, um, it takes a nap. So I was feeling that every time that um, uh, there is this relationship, this direct relationship with the ground, with the soil, with uh, this idea of uh, of the surface of of the mine, uh, uh, there should be an imprint on the body. So um, a, a, a quite direct um, connection of the body with uh, with the with the landscape. Um, yes. So basically, this is what what consists. Um, uh, the subjectivity of it, yeah, as yeah. a character, and, and and it's and it's being impacted by um, real time data. Is that correct from the from the location? Is that um, oh, have we lost you? We're not very lucky with digital technology. <laughs> <laughs> this is generally my experience of everything. <laughs> well, you know, we can show a little bit of a clip again. Oh, no, you're, you're, okay. no you're, you're back. Um, yeah, I was just asking about real-time data. And actually, I will segue that to yeah. talk about, like, what would the affordances, because I know that this is not a usual, you know, format for you to work with. What what was it about the real-time um, way of working that that sort of that was important for working on this project? Because I know, yeah, just as a new area for you potentially, um, mm, what were the affordances yeah. provided by that? Um, yeah, I mean, the decision of, of working on, on, on a real time, um, like having a real time outcome was basically yeah. to, to have this um, obvious, um, changes of uh, the temperature which um, I don't know if I clarified that but uh, so just to to uh, 
be very clear. So uh, everything is uh, simulated exactly as it is happening at the mine location. So if uh, it's sunny, then it's gonna be sunny uh, within the projection. Uh, if it's rainy, if the humid, um, I mean, the, there are of course um, um, weather data which are not so obvious as, as humidity and wind, but they are somehow affecting um, the behavior of the character. Um, um, yeah, uh, I mean, working in real time has, of course, a lot of limitations because it's not a, it's it's not a stable solid work which you can send in a file in order to be projected. You need uh, you need infrastructure. Um, yeah, I mean, with a specific one, we 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 need somehow quite a, a demanding computational um, yeah. setup. So um, yeah, th those are the limitations that it's not like, um, um, yeah, um, a single file which uh, uh, can be run on any, on any, any uh, computer. Um, at the same time, I think that uh, choosing, um, uh, having it in real time, it was the core of the idea like this constant transformation and at the same um, at the same period I was feeling that I couldn't um, which is something that I still I still feel that I am not able to do because I'm not interested in I mean I didn't want it to um, engage at all into uh, directing like um, I don't perceive that I have skills in cinematography or in um, Mm, yeah, moving image, um, um, yeah, compositions. So um, I was feeling that somehow I was given the freedom of not um, engaging with those demanding, uh, I mean, mm. for myself, demanding tasks of deciding when, uh, what the camera will be about. Which is a good, excellent question. How because I haven't I haven't seen it I've only seen clips of it mm. and how is the camera um automated within the simulation are you always following the are you always following Sam um, or yeah so yeah. um we worked uh, a bit with um an arbitrary way, I would say. Okay. So, yeah, we installed quite a lot of cameras within the environment. So it's more or less 69 cameras. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's a, um, a simple way of, I think, dealing with this issue, especially for real time um, work. So every time sun passes by a camera, a hotspot, let's say, um, where a camera is situated, then the camera is activated. And in this way, there is a circular um, change of the image, um, which it, it's, it's quite organic. And uh, also um, it creates always a different, I mean, the work is never the same as uh, the, the motion of the character uh, takes different paths within the environment and activates occasionally different the different cameras. Yeah. And so in terms of, I mean, because I know um, you also are a sculptor and you work in many other ways. I, I wonder how this, um, how, how, how do you see these kind of, these practices sitting together? Because I know we, uh, we talked yesterday about flatness and, um, mm. and particularly like different ideas of, like materiality and the image, um, is that the is that the kind of one of the driving um, mm. elements of of that of it basically? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Flatness has to do a lot of. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, there, it's basically a bridging between the two. Let's say. Um, different domains of the practice, uh, which I would say that I, I rarely work on digital practices uh, unless I feel that there is um, 
a very strong connection with the rest of the body of of the of the practice in general so um yeah i think that uh flatness and then um um the idea of the body and how the body is represented, uh, what we what we talked about um, yesterday as well, this uh, absence and presence of volume um, is something that it's I think it's it's um, it's always there. It's always under investigation. Um, yeah, it has yeah. always been an an open question how you can. Um, somehow talk about sculpture, uh, use uh, even materiality that traditionally is perceived as um, very sculptural, let's say, but uh, at the same time, um, uh, question volume in the way that uh, um, we have, you know, we have uh, learned to experience volume in, in, in the very sculptural norms. So, yeah, so flatness is is uh, is there definitely, and uh, for me, it's at the same time linked with um, um, this uh, virtual digital experience that we we are bombarded, let's say, from our screens, especially like for the last year. I mean, um, um, it's quite difficult to uh, understand uh, the boundaries between the physical and, and the digital, especially uh, when we're spending uh, so much time in front of your screens and monitors, and especially when you're perceiving the world through them. Yeah. So, yeah. And I don't think, I mean, I personally, you know, I'm not uh, not trying to make you think of things in, in binaries either, because I don't think it is a, a straightforward binary um, mm. between like digital and physical space. Like it's, it's, it is the world around us. Um, uh, but I'm really interested in some research we're doing at the moment is into sort of the potential of the metaverse as a future cultural infrastructure and I know that the metaverse is quite uh, an old term, really. Um, it's been around, it's been like a sci-fi um, uh, sort of narrative device uh, for a long time. And, um, and one element of that is the, the sort of the potential for how that impacts um, identity and um the sort of potential for a multiplicity of identity, which I find interesting in relation to the sort of embodied um, San, who is um, embodying like so many different, it's not, again, it's not a, a, not a binary. We're talking about like uh, multiple positions and uh, multiple perspectives within, within, a, within a space. Mm -hmm. So that's um, why I was interested um, but also, you know, what are these spaces um, to use a three D term, if you like? <laughs> because we, are, you know, we're, we're talking about three D development, but it is obviously yeah. still uh, another sort of version of flatness. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what, you know, how do, how are artists negotiating these kinds of spaces? Whether they are building, you know the worlds and spaces of their own or um, becoming involved in sort of pre-existing metaverses mm -hmm. as they exist. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that that's sort of where I'm <laughs> coming from. Yeah. Um, but I guess um, I think what's interesting is this sort of body potentially as this source of data as well. Like we are in our interaction with um in our day-to-day -day digital interaction we are obviously like creating we are we are sort of sources of data and I guess what San is is like an embodiment of a slightly different <laughs> um uh multiplicity of data um which I think is interesting like it becomes very expansive 
and sort of planetary yeah. in a sense yeah yeah no, no it, it's it's true because I mean I was thinking a lot um of of um the data when we were discussing when you asked me the other day like um what type of data are there directing sense um behavior and then um I went back to my list and I, I realized that, I mean, it was something that I already knew, but I, I recalled that it's basically, it could be basically an app on my phone. Like uh, mm. it's, it's like weather forecasting, which we could have on our phone. And um, I mean, I, I tend to check my weather app a lot. So, I mean, it makes sense how things, um, how things are interweaved in a way, but um, they they can be visualized in in a wider angle as as even um, you know spaces uh, themselves. Um, mm. And in in relation as well with this idea of um, of the representation of the space um, as something that is uh, existing or um, let's say. Um, imagined or fantasized uh, uh, it, it's something that it's, um, it's it's in my mind quite a lot I mean uh, it's it's the only work I think uh, where I have talked about a very specific location of an existing location uh, in the rest of the practice uh, I feel that there is always an avoidance to um, uh, situate uh, the works in a very a specific um, you know mm. setup uh, not only because I would like to keep that fluid like of somehow um, you know implying that they could be anywhere like keeping this uh, space time open and fluid and um, non-specific uh, but as well I wouldn't like to for the works to to be somehow um, um, you know, affected by this idea of origin of, um, uh, yeah, deriving from something that is, um, yeah, of, of, of something known, uh, rather than uh, let, letting them free to uh, be interpreted uh, into mm. a context which for each one of the viewers could uh, represent something different. Mm. Just uh, sorry, going back to asking about the um, about the simulation, but um, I'm assuming it's it's is it like a twenty? I just wanted to see if it was like a, a straightforward, not mm -hmm. straightforward. I don't mean like, but in terms of um, if it's a twenty-four hour day, um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it is. And it's, it's a pity because um, I have only, I mean, I haven't experienced the work into um, a completely different time zone. So for example, I have, uh, I have seen the work how um, it runs in London. So it's just like two hours, uh, different mm. time zone. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose that um, in a, different time zone like in a different hemisphere you can have like what uh, is going on uh, on the spot while uh, being uh, yourself as a body into a completely different condition mm. yeah um what was my next question i guess it's also um an interest in in terms of your, just a slightly open question, in terms of the way that you think about the relationship between technology and nature, I guess. I mean, this is something that I've grappled with with lots of different um, projects in the past. I mean, how is something, how have you approached that kind of, what is considered a binary, <laughs> again, um, with, a project like this yeah um yeah in generally for me it's um i would say it's, it's a philosophical question rather than uh, a question of uh, uh um, urging for you know uh, 
applying solutions on it. I think it's it's an open question. I, I do yeah. not uh, uh, expect uh, myself or art in general to give answers to that. Um, either propose like uh, you know paradigms of what um, um, uh, a good work uh, merging art te and technology should be. Um, I think that with the specific word uh, work, uh, what I felt that um, I I I needed to uh, express was um, um, the very locality of the of the spot, like uh, somehow um, communicate uh, um, this locality, and at the same time. Um, position my myself and my identity through that. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm really interested in um, Valeria and I have spoken about this before. <laughs> um, in the kind of how we experience the natural world through things like video games. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for example, um, it's most, or it's often an, a, a really wonderful writer, and Linda Chang writes about this. It's mm. it's often an afterthought um, when we're in the sort of building of of virtual worlds. Mm. Um, you know, it's like you go on the um, uh, epic store and you buy like the standard tree or whatever, um, and it, and it's very much like in the it's very much in the background. But then there are lots of other works that you know and that's not works made by artists but also really interesting games mm. um that are choosing to foreground what is normally in the background mm. <laughs> um when we're normally talking about like the characters and the mechanics of moving through a narrative um as opposed to what this environment is and what your relationship to it and I find that very interesting. So, um, uh, yeah, but I think that's what's interesting about a piece such as yours, which is, you know, we're talking about it's it's a simulation that it's an, a non-playable game, and it's okay. kind of never ending. <laughs> it's a continue a yeah. continuous yeah. work. Yeah, that's exactly. like living. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I, I use this, you know, very cliche term of the Sisyphean fate uh, in the beginning. But um, yeah, at the end, I think that it's very close to that idea, like of of the repetition, uh, yeah, of this endless repetition, uh, which is not aiming into something a very concrete. But yeah, it's yeah, it's there. Will you? Would you like to run it forever? <laughs> Uh, mm, that that's, that's an interesting question because when we <laughs> were working with uh, Jonathan, at, um, the engineer at Google, uh, I mean he's very familiar with uh, working with artists. He's um, an assistant of uh, um, a very famous artist himself. So um, uh, when I told him that I wanna I wanna do a non playable video game, uh, the, the, his first reaction was, "Yeah, but you need to decide when." Uh, when Sun uh, dies. Uh, so we had this debate that um, I don't want him to die. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to take this, uh, this decision. I, I just want to have a non-playable, endless <laughs> um, yeah. game. Yeah, multi-century video game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I suppose that, game. yeah, I suppose that it, um, it dies when... Uh, uh, when it's not uh, current anymore, I mean, when it doesn't make sense anymore to follow its behavior, or it doesn't make sense anymore to, um, yeah, to continue uh, inspecting the changes, uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of also the sand also embodies an archive of mm. the location, right? Because yeah. it's as an evolutionary being um yeah. san is a product of of 
however long the simulation has been running yeah exactly and that's yeah. interesting yeah also it might uh, i mean it might die when like our means uh, of running it are not existing anymore yes. i mean which but might you, be yeah yeah which might be um, yeah um, but it's not a mechanism part. it's not a mechanism in the character it's not like if the weather you know if climate change gets so bad like mm. to a certain point then the then sand dies kind of thing uh yeah i mean i i, I don't know i don't really know uh, <laughs> yeah yeah but it's extremely, you know, interesting your approach, you know, to sound. This is why, you know, we really wanted to invite, you know, to have this talk, you know, with Kay. Mm -hmm. It's because, you know, um, also, you know, for our project, you know, we conceive the body, you know, as a collection of data, you know, and an active mm -hmm. archive. And what we want to investigate at W21 is really that, you know, like there's no binaries, you know, there's just more a spectrum of, you know, the way you might perform the body, you know, as an actually you know, a virtual, you know, as in a gaming experience. Um, and this is why, you know, we're working specifically, you know, with data, we're collecting them, but in a way we're trying to invert, you know, the role of the archive, because the archive is something, you know, from, you know, um, in a way it's a sort of, you know, Western creation, you know, it has a specific taxonomy behind it. Um, and, you know, in a way it feels like, you know, also for you, the archive is conceived as something active and open access. And, you know, by being, you know, constantly, you know, implementing, you know, the body of sun, you have a way, you know, to have an open archive and also, you know, to have questions, mm -hmm. you know, from a more, you know, open ended point of view, which, you know, this is something, mm -hmm. you know, that we really, really, you know, nurture as well, you know, in our project. Um, I would like, you know, to show again the clip, <laughs> how perhaps with the audio, <laughs> let me try again. Don't worry, technology. Exactly, they might be tricky sometimes. Okay, but it's a huge clip. I mean, we can we can have just uh, a few can minutes of it. it or not, because maybe it's really me not being able. Mm, it's not working. Let's try. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Yes. Um, so I actually have, you know, one, one question that we were talking about the, the environment and, you know, the collection of data. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something, you know, I'm actually thinking a lot recently that, you know, from an Anthropocene, you know, perspective, you know, we're always, you know, considering like, you know, the human beings as the center of the environment. And what I really love about your, your project is that, you know, it inverts also, you know, that perspective 
like you know in a way that you know we are a collection of the environment you know it's a you know it shifts the perspective um in, in which you know it helps you know to have a more holistic view and also you know intersectional perspective that you know you are what you are but you know in relation to environment that you know is is around you um, and it feels like, you know, your work is really also, you know, considering that, you know, intersectional, it's, uh, you know, elements are key in your, in your practice. And we have been, you know, talking about that for a very long time. You were one, actually probably the first person that actually did the questionnaire for Dublin 21. I think still back in 2019, where we were, you know, still figuring out what the project was going um, to be. Um, and I think, you know, this is, you know, we had an amazing discussion. I really want to thank Kay, you know, for, you know, her questions and also, you know, for jumping in, you know, when my audio was not working <laughs> properly. Um, I would like, you know, to kind of complete, you know, our our panel, you know, with with actually an open question for both of you. And and Lita, you know, you actually already answered to this. And you know, I actually invite everyone to go and, and check that answer on our Instagram profile. But um, we have this question, which is, you know, and this is a problem for Kate. Yeah. <laughs> so much pressure. There's so much pressure in this question. <laughs> but, you know, that is an interesting question because, you know, um, our perspective, you know, when we decided, you know, to, you know, to, to fund W21, you know, Women 21st Century, it, it was also, you know, what is the, you know, you know the value of words? Um, you know, it feels like in our days is even, you know, complicated, you know, do you define yourself as, as a woman? And what that actually mean, you know, it, it's, it's quite complicated. And at the same time, you know, this is why, you know, we are collecting, you know, data through all of the um, interviews that we do is to understand and also, you know, to portray a picture that is, you know, and, and a system that is very, very broad, you know, there's not just, you know, one single answer. You might find, you know, some patterns that repeat, but, you know, as, you know, as in some, you know, probably, you know, we should start considering our bodies, you know, as, as an extension of ourselves and just not, you know, as a bio biological being. At the same time, you know, biology as in some, you know, so, you know, that those data, you know, they define you, but at the same time, you know, there's, you know, there's a, you know, there's an open ended also, you know, to that. So, in regards to this, okay, <laughs> we are going to ask you the question that we usually ask, you know, as part of our questionnaire. So what would you say to future generations of women? <laughs> Lito, the question is also for you. Um, I think that was dismissed, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> do, you want to, <laughs> do you want to go first? I'm happy to go. Okay. Okay. I had two things. Well, actually I had three things. I might not do the third one. Um, one, I have, there is power in collectivity. I also think trust that you know what is best for yourself and those around you. But it's also about like, it's what I find interesting about this project, the, um, the W21 project is about finding, it's about building a net, it's about building a community, right? And a network and, um, that is very, very important, <laughs> I think. Um, and it's seeking out those people um, uh, that you, you know, make you feel safe or, um, you know, everything <laughs> in life. I won't do my point about gaslighting. Um, <laughs> I was looking for that though. <laughs> I'll do it if you want. Okay, go. Sure. My final point is, I have because I've written it down. If you think you're a victim of gaslighting, you definitely are. Trust yourself and, the, you know, just believe in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Kay. Actually, no, I think everyone, you know, is going to, you know, rely to that. So, yeah. Lito, do you, do you want to add something to that? Uh, I, ha I wrote down the gaslighting quote. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think happens. that yes. Um, no, I, I think that it's it's important, as Kate said, uh, Kate said that um, um, yeah. I mean, uh, we we should rely on this idea of community making, and uh, somehow try to um, 
discharge ourselves and also the communities that we're trying to uh, develop from gatekeeping and any other kind of yeah you know, um, obstacles that could uh, uh, make it harder of this uh, coming together. Amazing. Um, I would like to ask you know if there's any questions that people you know would like to ask you, and uh, if there's someone you know just jump in. Okay, we have one. So Lito, what are some of the features or behavioral characteristics you consider but decided not to use when creating the character? No. Uh, yeah, um, interesting question. Um, mm. um, behavior, um, yeah, it was quite, um, strict in terms that uh, behavior was directed from from the from the data collection so uh, it was very specific like walking um, running around uh, the environment um, oh yeah there, there was one uh, there was uh, a question uh, if uh, it would uh, if, if sun uh, would uh, uh, get access into the lake if it would seem swim since uh, the, the, uh, the fluid there is acidic that would imply that um, its flesh uh, is not affected by that so yeah we decided to to keep it so sun can swim in the lake um, yeah, and then uh, other different uh, characteristics in relation to the model, uh, to, to the body of, of the character uh, was definitely, I mean, um, how representationally we could avoid any uh, gender references, but at the same time, uh, mm, uh, yeah, avoiding a dichotomy of uh, uh, what it uh, looks like, but at the same time, keeping it quite uh, open to, you know, interpretations. Uh. I love that. Thank, thank you so much. So if we don't have any other questions, um, I would like to thank again Kay and Lito for you know this amazing conversation that we had and I also want to apologize again for the <laughs> troubles that we had with the audio initially but Kay you know I know that she did a great job so she jumped in while I was you know still out of the room on Zoom <laughs> trying to figure it out how to re-enter it but you know thank you so much you know for everyone you know for attending um, and thanks again uh, also to, to Yomi and Agora for making this possible and for our you know, long-time collaborations with W21. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank Good you. luck with okay. the rest. Um, the, the file should be available very soon. <laughs> okay, take care. Thank <laughs> you, bye. Thanks a lot.